We've been working on this arena fighting game, and this is the flowchart that I gave you for the game logic, at least the initial game logic, although we've been uh, sort of expanding on it, which is great. I want to point out, though, that a bunch of this stuff is game logic, like preparing a new level is determining uh, you know, how much HP a new monster has, for example. But then some of it, waiting for user action, well, we're relying on the graphical user interface to progress from this point on through either this branch or this branch of the flowchart. But once we do take a branch here, like a player uses a potion, you can heal the player, and then there's a monster attack after that, and then we f flow up here to determine whether or not the player has been defeated, there isn't really much that has to happen in the user interface until we get into either the end game condition or waiting again for the user action, we can, in, along this path here, we could update what the user sees, uh, you know, the, the monster damage that has been done, for example, or the, uh, the updated healing part. So what we want to do then is separate our game logic from our graphical user interface. There are lots of reasons to do that. One is just to make it easier for people, multiple people working on a team to code the different components. But another reason is that you can later change the graphical user interface in significant ways without modifying the underlying game logic. So let's uh, go and start making, I'm going to make a new project here. I'm not creating a main class yet because our main application is going to be a JFrame. Into that we're going to put a separate component which will be a JPanel that will be our uh, graphical user interface. So new JFrame and I'm going to call this one Arena Game. I better make it a package here. Uh, Arena Game. Okay. And so by making this JFrame form, see there's not a whole lot to it just yet, uh, here is the main method that we're going to be using, which just sort of starts the design. I have a couple of little things I want to do, just um, the way I want to do it right now. There are lots of options for how to do this, but I'm going to make it into a flow layout. Uh, and also I want to uh, set some minimum sizes here. Let's set our minimum size to uh, 400 by 300. Okay, uh, that should be pretty good. And then, there, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff you can do here. There we are. So that is our game. Now, we don't yet have a graphical user interface apart from that sort of blank canvas. Well, I'm going to make a new panel, J panel, for that uh, GUI component. So I have Arena Game and I have now Arena GUI. So this J panel doesn't have anything in it yet either. I'm going to throw a button in there just to start things. So there are lots of components that we're going to need, but this will be the attack button, oh, not attach, attack button, and I will relabel it as well. Oops, that was the wrong key I hit there. There we go. That's the attack, I did it again, attack button. Okay, and so that's, that's a user interface component which when it's clicked will tell the game, hey, the user wants to attack, the, it'll be a player attack and go ahead and do that. So I've listed out over here in a, a text document here uh, the different pieces that I want to include in each part. So in the game, for example, I'm going to be storing a bunch of values in, in fields. And you know, you've kind of got choices here. It doesn't have to be exactly like this, but uh, that's how I've decided to run mine. So I've got the level, the current player HP, monster HP, how many potions they have left, and a current score that we're going to keep track of. Um, and these are the things that the game will have to be able to do. Prepare a new level, the player will need to be able to attack, the player will need to be able to use a potion, and there'll be a, mo a method for when a monster attacks. But separately from that, in the graphical user interface, I need to be able to get player actions. Those will be the button event methods. And then also, um, some way to update everything and all, I'm also going to have an area for messages. Let me just build that area right now. Let's have a text area. I'm going to put down at the bottom here uh, right there and there and that's going to be the uh, message text area and just the choice that I've made for my um, user interface is that um, some messages like if a, if a monster damages you there'll be a message here that shows it and then also up above somewhere maybe in like a label I'll see the player's HP uh, modified as well. Let me just relabel that to player HP label. 
Okay, so that's how those components are fitting together. Now, we, we do need to get this graphical user interface piece inside of this piece here. So here's how we're going to do that. After the games init components method, I'm going to make a new GUI object. So I'm going to call it GUI. I have to make a field for this in a second, which uh, is going to be a new arena GUI. And now this is the normal constructor right here. Let me just put that in here. Arena GUI GUI. Okay, so that's going to be a reference that I can store for the rest of the application now. This is the normal um, constructor with no parameters, but I'm actually going to modify that constructor and pass a reference to, we haven't used this before, to this. This is a protected keyword which um, is a reference to the arena game object, this particular JFrame that we're going to be running. The reason that we do this is that uh, we want the GUI to be able to refer back to things like these numbers that we are storing so that it can properly update what's on the screen. So now I go to the GUI and I'm going to go back into a source and I'm going to refine or change this um, constructor here. I want it to be arena GUI with the parameter arena game. And I'm going to call it parent game to be really clear. And I'm going to store that value. And where will I store it? I will store it in a field called game. So now later in the GUI, when the GUI needs to know, hey, what's the current player HP, it can look at game dot player HP, that uh, parameter, or not parameter, that field that's available to it. So we're pretty close. If I were to run this right now, yeah, I think it'll compile and it'll run all right, but you'll see the GUI components will not show up properly because, let me just show you that that's the case. See, there it is, but we, we should be able to see these uh, design components that we've thrown in there, right? Well, we can't yet because we have created the GUI, but we haven't actually added it to the, uh, to the game itself. So I'm in the arena game class in the source, and after the init components and the GUI has been made, I'm going to do this dot add, or I could just say add, GUI. Now, remember that GUI is actually, I'll show you here, it's actually a J panel, and so that's fine to add that GUI thing, that GUI component, into the arena game. And I just want to make sure that I changed my layout. Yeah, I'm on a flow layout, so that's good. So now when I run that, I might have one more step to do, but I think that might work. We will run it, and so now that I've added it, it's created the J panel, and it's put it in there for me to see. And I probably want to adjust my sizes a little bit, make things a little bit bigger uh, to fit OK. But that's pretty good. Maybe I'll do that right now while I'm here. Set my minimum size. We'll make it 450 by 350. That should run a little bit better. OK. So now uh, I've created my GUI, I've created the game, and uh, all I need to do now is build out some of these other things that could happen. Like let's say these uh, player actions that could take place. I'll go to my design mode. This button, this attack button, I want it to do something. So events, action, action performed. Well, there's a, th uh, a tendency or you, you feel tempted to hear say, well, they've attacked, and so now I want to do things like modify the monster's HP and all that stuff. Well, this isn't the place to do it. The GUI itself doesn't perform those actions. Instead, we call game dot, and I'm going to make a new method called player attack. We call game dot player, player attack, which, and all that does is it says to the, to the game logic area, hey, the player would like to attack. Can you look after that, please? And so down here, this is in the game class now, we have a public method, which returns nothing, called player attack. Oh, I missed my bracket. There we go. And in here is where all of the stuff happens, like, you know, you uh, randomly determine uh, the damage done. And we've talked in the discussion area 
quite a bit about how we could do that. Maybe randomly, uh, once in a while, you know, 10% of the time uh, there's a, a critical hit of some kind where there's a larger um, amount of damage done, or maybe the damage that's done depends on the level, or uh, maybe it depends on the player HP. The lower the HP, the less damage the player is able to do because they're already injured. So you do a bunch of stuff to, to modify these game values here, and then there are two other things that could happen. One is uh, GUI dot, well, we want to uh, do a message thing, right? I want to I want to have a message uh, that's portrayed to the user. I'm going to make a public method called message. And in here, I'm going to do my message text area dot set text. All I'm going to do is just transmit that directly. And I'm going to use the, uh, you know, I'm going to append, not set text, because I want to add to what's there. Append, so add on top of it, um, a new line character, followed by the string that's been passed in. Okay, so all that does is puts a message in that um, text area down here. All right, so back to the game area, GUI dot message you. Uh, did and then some amount of damage and there'll be like a variable here uh, instead of the number five <laughs> something that you will have determined up in this area that I've sort of commented out so it'd be something like that and then we'll also call GUI dot update uh, stats which doesn't exist just yet either but I've mentioned it sort of over here or update all I called it I guess update all. And so the GUI then, when I call this method, let's create that, will have to go and change anything that it needs to in, in what's displayed to the user. So let's have a, a public void method update all. And it'll do things like, uh, let's say, player HP label dot set text to player HP, so I, all I've done is like stuck that initial label bit back in there, followed by game dot player HP, which is a, a, a variable, a field that is available to uh, any class that's inside of this package, so because I didn't put the word private in front of it basically. And I can do this for other things too, you know, if you'd have a label for the monster HP and so on, and you would you would list all these. Anytime you want to update all, it'll just sort of cycle through all the pieces that could be updated and just make sure that they're all there. Okay, let's build this and see how we're doing. Uh, do, 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 do. Hang on one second, I want to... There, that'll save everything first. Okay, so when this is clicked now, hey look, I did five damage, the message was updated here, the player HP was updated, although I didn't actually do that, so it's still just zero. If I attack again, hey, it's still doing five damage every time. And so there's a separation now between the user interface and the game that we get to maintain throughout all of this. And so I'll build out these other um, methods here, which are, these are logical methods, and then every time I'm finished doing something, I run the update all method in the GUI to say, hey, I'm done, update all of the stats that you're displaying for the user, and sometimes I, uh, I send a message to the user interface. Okay, so if you have any questions, please ask in the uh, discussion area for this activity, 3.2, and of course, uh, uh, if you have any video requests for how we can, uh, how I can show you how to do some, some more of this stuff, that's great. If you want to make your own video, I would appreciate it. Thanks a lot.